Next is like the availability, everybody knows, but uh, generally uh, um, any organization set up a trend that, okay, you know, uh, your uptime should be seven nines. This is what they call seven nines means this. This is what seven nine means, okay? This is the uptime you should be having your application. Suppose this is your requirement, which I mean, okay, fine. You know, I want my application to be seven nine. This is the common uh, terminology people use seven nines, five nines, eight nines, ten nines, whatever, right? So that means nine nine point nine nine nine, something like that. Now, in order to achieve these kind of availability, just imagine uh, your your system can only be not available for maybe one second to two seconds per year. You know, if you want to achieve something similar kind of uh, availability, your system should not be down for more than one to two seconds in a year or one to two minutes in a year or something sort of, right? So this is what we talk about when we say the word availability, right? And what, what is the definition of the availability? When we talk about this 99.999% available, what does it mean? Well, anybody can tell what does availability means? Application item. Sorry, application. Accessible. Okay, application accessible. So if application is accessible, it means available, right? Okay. So yes. Uh, so what does it mean? The availability actually means is that you know when uh, you submit, it's not like you know uh, uh, you have submitted your request. Uh, you know, just think about this. Uh, you know, that is the confusion people have it. Uh, you are uh, you know a system A, and you're calling a system B. And there is a, a defined SLA, okay? Now the SLA says, suppose you're you a payment banking system and uh, you know this is the client which requests you to get the bank details or the account uh, details that how much amount you have in the bank, whether to, whether to process their transaction or deny the transaction or the credit limit they want to check. Now your system is available, okay? Your system is up and running, but it is under a heavy load, okay? So the SLA was that, okay, fine within 500 milliseconds, uh, I should be getting the response from you. If it doesn't, if I don't get it, I will consider that as a fault and that will be a breach of SLA, service level agreement is what we call. And if you're not adhering to that SLA, there will be a penalty charge to you that, okay, you have not uh, you know, adhered to our SLA and we lost a client. We you know, lost a transaction because of you. So here, the definition of the availability is not just responding the uh, uh, call, right? So what it is doing is it, it is taking the request. Maybe it is taking one minute to process. Why? Because this is having underperformance. It, it is, you know, it has downgraded because of so and so reason. You maybe latest deployment has caused a lot of um, you know heavy processes running on that, and uh, you know it's not going well. But is your system still available if you're responding in one minute? Uh, answer to uh, question to you guys. Is the system is available? Will you call it available? Yes. You system will call it available. available. But the availability definition changes as per the SLAs. So if you're not meeting the SLA, that means it's as good as not available, right? Because your client is configured in that way. Suppose this is a, um, a rule which has been set up in their system that, okay, you know, a HTTP call will maximum wait for 500 milliseconds. Uh, and then after that will be timeout. All the request will timeout. And that means for application A, the B is as good as dead, right? Because you are, even though you are available, uh, it is not, right? It is not for A, right? So what happens is you need to define the agreement, the uh, definition of the availability. You need to also define the SLA. Uh, you also need to define the tolerance table, right? Tolerance level, right? So there is something called the uh, uh, tolerance level for any SLA that, okay, if you define the SLA for, uh, you know, suppose 500 milliseconds, uh, you can do plus or minus of 10% of uh, your SLA agreement. So what will happen is uh, uh, if a request suppose thrown out from A to B and B is not responding within the 500 milliseconds, there will be a retry will be sent, uh, which is with additional uh, time buffer zone that, okay, if it is not working for 500 seconds, you can retry with 510 seconds or 20 seconds. And uh, that retry, uh, sometimes again, it depends on there could be a uh, three retries, right? And there is something called the exponential retries. Uh, you might be thinking why I'm going uh, such a deep, but I'll tell you when you get involved in the interview and you try to explain something, you might end up in a situation where you need to you know, um, uh, explain all the uh, inside of it. Like, you no, know, suppose your API is not responding, what you will do? What will be your answer? How you will handle it? 
So these are the things you should be talking about, right? So there is something called exponential retry. Anybody has heard of it? Exponential retry. Waiting uh, um, exponential yes. time and then retrying it. Yes. So the exponential retry means it is a very generic thought, right? That you know, if you called one application right now and it didn't respond to you or it timed out, right? Uh, so you know, you you try that you know right now. Then after that, you will try after a minute, suppose, just I'm giving a hypothetical scenario. Then after that, does it make sense to try next minute? Or does it make sense to try after five minutes? If five minutes fails, does it make sense to try in seven minutes? Or does it make sense to try in 15 minutes? If 15 minutes fail, does it make sense to try in 16th minute or 30 minutes, right? So what happens is it is a, it is a general theory or it is a general thing that if some application is not responding you within a minute, there is a very likely, less likely that it will be responding in another two minutes also. So better you do either a Fibonacci, that Fibonacci series what we use, or there is exponential uh, uh, retry nature what you can do. And you, if you want to do a five retry, better have it like an exponential retry. Again, this all must should come under the SLA, whether you are really okay with that, generally the asynchronous job or a batch processing. When we do a batch processing, that can happen asynchronously in offline mode as well. So that is where you can do a multiple retry, doing some sync APIs, or mostly in those things where you can use the exponential retry. So this is the answer to that question. What kind of, and I, and I have been asked, and we also ask these kind of questions that how you will handle the retry. If you're calling an API and that API is not responding, what you will do, how you will handle these scenarios, right? So what, what will be your answer? So that is, the, that is what the exponential retry or whether you are going to mark something or you do a alert, when you will do alert, you know, how to handle or suppress that alert in case of a false event or the real events, okay? So, so a system is available only when it is within the SLA, if the SLA is defined. If not, a system is as good as not available, okay? So what if you are sending an email and it is taking one hour to send the email? Do you really think your SMTP server or that server will be still be connected? Your connection will be still be uh, active? It will not. Right? You might get failure because of that, or your downstream services, which is expecting you to answer within 10 seconds, and you're still blocked on this above request, the upstream request, and your upstream itself is not responding back to you. There's no way you will be responding back to the downstream with the data. And it's like the whole chain has failed, right? So availability means also within the SLA. And that's what you call the availability, when API able to respond to you with the expected results.